Hey, welcome. It's Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com and here's a quick tip for working with thinking particles and this is going to show you how to get around the kind of subframe emission that you sometimes have with TP which causes like pulsing in the particles. I'm just going to show you one way you can get around that. First off, let's create an emitter. So I'm just going to create a null and I'll just call this emitter, funnily enough. Come to tags and let's add in an espresso tag. Okay, if we drag our emitter in here, and we, what we want to do is we want to output the uh, global position and we want to output the uh, global matrix. And um, if we then add in a thinking particles generator, I'm going to add PStorm and let's put our emitter position and emitter alignment. Like so, and we should have a TP emitter working. So if we now press play, you can see there we go. Okay, so I've still got the P Storm node selected here, so I can change a few of the attributes. Okay, I want to set this up so it's as if it's like a rocket taking off or something like that. So I'm just going to um, rotate the pitch minus 90 and just raise this up a little bit, just so it's just above the ground. Let's add in another null and let's just call this floor. And in my uh, thinking particles, I'm just going to uh, choose pass all and I'm going to create um, a dynamic P uh, deflector. Okay, and drag the all group into here. And for the deflector, I'm going to use the floor, like so. Okay, and what we want to do with our floor is we want to uh, rotate this 90 as well, like so. And if we just close the Expresso, rewind, press play, you can see now that we have all our particles hitting the floor. Okay, I'm not after anything realistic at all here. Um, let's just come back to that settings. And did you know you can right click up here on the backwards arrow in the attribute manager and it will show you all your kind of previous uh, parameters or objects etc that you had in the attribute manager so I'm just going to go back to my P deflector um, and in here we have a surface parameter and let's set that up to like 90 and that will mean that the uh, particles will kind of slide along the surface rather than bounce off so if we look at that from the side you can see that we're getting this kind of effect okay and I'm just going to set the size to be like really big like so and let's set the bounce down to say 15 and we could probably add in some gravity here um, Okay, cool. So not that realistic at all. <laughs> but the other thing I want to do is come back to my um, P storm. And here it is. And um, let's set the count to be kind of like 10,000. And let's set the field of view to be much smaller. And let's set the emitter to be much smaller, say 10 by 10, like so. And now we have kind of this. And you can see that we are um, getting a really cool looking uh, sort of rocket that's about to take off. Awesome. Yeah, you're right. Not awesome. But what I'm going to do now is just um, come to the side view. And let's actually come out quite a long way. I um, really want this rocket to take off with some huge amounts of velocity. So I'm going to just uh, come to... Let's rewind and just press play again. Do you say around 50? Okay, let's set my frames to be 249 for the whole document. So on frame 50, I'm going to select my emitter and I'm just going to add a key for Y position. It's going to have it go straight up. And then let's come to say um, 100. Don't know why I actually extended the size of the document. Probably be cool to just do it like this. So this is going up a long way. Um, like so. Okay, and if we rewind and uh, let's deselect and press play and see what happens. So we have all our particles emitted, and then you can see as it comes up, we're getting all these gaps. Okay, and this is the problem that I'd like to um, take a look at trying to solve. And if we come to our perspective view, there we go, look at that. Um, really clear what the problem is here. And this is quite common because what's happening is the particles are being emitted on the whole frame only and there's none in between. Even though we've got all these particles, 10,000 particles, we don't have any in-between frames or any subframe emission. 
Imagine if you were using this with something like Pyrocluster and you wanted to actually create a rocket that was um, done in a more of an awesome way than this, uh, but you wanted that trail of particles to obviously be you know, continuous as the, as the rocket takes off. You don't want this pulsing to take place. So what you can do is you can take the actual velocity of the object that's emitting the particles and you can tie that into the velocity of the emission itself. And it's pretty simple to do. You just open up the Expresso once again. And here we already have all the objects and the nodes that we need. Let's just move that out of the way. That's not even needed really. I just put that in there just because it was fun to do. Um, and if we come to our emitter and come to the output ports, we can come down here and you can see we have position velocity. It's going to out output a kind of a velocity for us and that velocity can be taken from here and it can be input into our p storm node and if we take this and we tie this into our emitter velocity then what will happen is it will use the velocity from our object as it moves and it will tie that into the the velocity that the particles are emitted so we take this vector and we input it into there and now and when we rewind and press play when our rocket takes off you can see we now have exactly the result that we're after for those of you that have always wanted to have sub frame emission within thinking particles this is one way of achieving it and if we zoom right out you can see yes it continues all the way up now that is awesome so i hope you find that tip handy um, and if you do work with thinking particles you probably come across this problem and if you haven't managed to solve it already there's the solution for you so i hope you enjoyed this tip from Tim Clapham at Hello Lux and don't forget to head on over to the old hellolux.com blog for more tips and tricks with Cinema 4D and After Effects. Thanks very much for watching.